everybody. Welcome from Las Vegas, Nevada. Oh, look, I said it right for once. Nevada. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our newest uh, studio iteration. Finally, some video back for the people. And uh, we're here in Las Vegas, Las Vegas, Nevada. You have to say Nevada. People in Nevada get very upset if you say Nevada. It's Nevada. You will be corrected. People do get very upset about it. It's like people in uh, Oregon when you say Oregon. No? Oh, hi, everybody. Welcome to the thing. You know, so it's been an ordeal. Thank you for your guys' patience for the, uh, you know, kind of one show a week bullshit for a while on and off because getting this uh, shit here, you have to understand I had stuff in uh, New York City that had to be moved here. And then I had stuff that was in storage for three years in Los Angeles when I left LA, just put it in storage, you know, paying $170 a month for storage in LA for a ton of shit, you know, not just, not just, uh, NLO stuff, but personal like furniture and all this crap. I still have to this day, like uh, a side by side stainless steel refrigerator and a washer dryer and a king sized uh, mattress, all in storage in Los Angeles. And, you know, why keep paying for that? It's going to be like Storage Wars where I just turn it over. Like I just, I've tried to sell it. Nobody wants to buy it. You know, I'm trying to give away this refrigerator to stainless steel side by side, water, ice in the door. Very nice. Too nice for most of you guys' apartments. Most of you, if you put this refrigerator in your apartment, it would look out of place. You know, that's how nice of the stuff we're talking about here. The washer and dryer is not, it looks beat up as hell, but it's uh, stackable. You know, those things, those stackable washer dryers go for like $1,000, $1,200 new. I'm trying to get $300 for the, for the pair. They don't look great. They are busted up and beat up. But you know what? They wash and they dry your clothes. I don't understand what, what more you could want. Your refrigerator, I get it. It has to be in your kitchen. It has to look nice. But getting all this stuff moved from uh, L.A. to here. Uh, New York to here, uh, just a lot of stuff. And then you combine it all and then you kind of have to put together a home. You have to live in a, <laughs> you have to like live in a nice place. So you have to like unpack and you're just hauling boxes. It's just a nightmare and weeks and weeks of just crap work coupled with buying a car, coupled with buying everything you need to buy. You know, uh, we were just listening to Sia cheap thrills before the show started. Need some cheap thrills. I've probably spent you know, like almost, this is no exaggeration, probably 15 grand between the car, you know, and uh down payment and then like moving it, you know, you move in somewhere, you have to have all this stuff you don't even realize you need. If you have two baths, so I have two bathrooms. So when you have two bathrooms, you have to have two shower curtains and two sets of rugs and, you know, two uh, sets of towels for people and you gotta, you gotta like make your place nice, and that costs so much money. You gotta go on Amazon and just spend the money. Uh, yeah, got got my big uh, like all the nice furniture I had in storage in LA out, like my big uh, sofa and shit that was covered. You know, we discovered this. This is old school for people three years ago when we left LA, and I packaged up my sofa. They like shrink wrap it, you know, when they're gonna put it in storage so it doesn't get all faded or dirty or whatever. You know, rats don't chew on it in the night. They uh, tip this sofa sideways, and all these uh, Jolly Rancher wrappers come pouring out. And Chris, Chip Chip Chris, like six months earlier, had been at my place, and he bought a five-pound bag of Jolly Ranchers. And there's no one else. Like, what? If, a, you know, like, put them on the table, and then when you get up, go throw away your pile of Jolly Rancher wrappers. B, you're shoving them down in the cushions of my sofa, and then, like, I'm, like I have... All these friends who just hang out snacking on Jolly Ranchers, and, we're, and one day I'm going to see these and just go, God, I wonder who that could have been. There's one guy I know in the world who eats Jolly Ranchers on my sofa and can't be bothered to get up to throw the wrappers away. His name is Chris. His name is Chris. He lives in London. He is Chris. I mean, and you could make the argument, maybe he didn't shove them down in the cushions. Maybe he was eating them at such a rapid pace that he just lost track of a couple wrappers. It could happen. I'm not going to argue with you. It's not a big deal, but it is funny because when I unwrapped the sofa that I hadn't had in three years, 
you know, there's all these Jolly Rancher wrappers on the inside. And uh, the sofa smells fruity. I have to say that. Like, you take it out, it smells really fruity and nice. So we're going to do a show this weekend. It didn't end up happening because the guest canceled. The guest was going to come in today. Uh, and now we're going to do one tomorrow, hopefully. But I've been uh, itching to get in here and do a show, so I just fired it up, testing everything, making sure everything works. And I'm pretty sure it does all work uh, for the most part. We are waiting on some stuff. I ordered, like, ram see, this is where the money comes from. Like, so you order, I've ordered RAM for this uh, Mac. We're going to take this thing up to 16 gigs of RAM. We got... Uh, uh, stuff out of storage that we haven't had in a, stu in, a, in a studio in a while. And by the way, we are in a big uh, studio now. We have the big studio desk back, our original studio desk that we had in uh, L.A. We have the refrigerator back in the, in the room so people can have some nice cold waters during the show. They don't have to get up and run off and, and feel self-conscious. You know, we take care of our guests. We're thinking about getting private label water in here. You know, you bring somebody over, you give them a water, and then it's whatever this brand is, Refresh. You know, what is that, Target brand? Or Nestle Life Water, or whatever you can get. But what if you had, like, private labels on this? Like, you had your own water. Wouldn't that look fancy and take your place up a notch? But then you got you to gotta soundproof the rooms and stuff. This whole place is, like, a really nice uh, hardwood floor. So then I have to put down rugs in here to make no echoey stuff happen. And uh, still not complete. Still not complete. And you put things on the walls. You put curtains. You put photos. You put uh, soundproofing foam. And all this stuff will cut down on the echo. Because if you are in a room with just straight up plain walls, um, <laughs> somebody sent me a link to downloadmoreram.com. Oh, yeah, Cloud Ram. Really popular stuff. No. Never going to be into that. But anyway, you get the idea. Like, all this stuff has to be set up. So hopefully tomorrow we'll have our first show. Uh, with a guest in here, test that stuff out. We do have room in here for five or six guests at the desk and then a, a second row behind them. Like we could technically fit 10, 12 people in here comfortably with their own space. You know, like it'd be packed, but everybody would kind of have an area and not have to sit on someone's lap. So it's a, it's a big room uh, and we can get back to doing some maybe some uh, stunty type things where we used to like shock people's dicks and stuff. We have the room now like Cornell Reed, I think owes us a body shaving. I think that's a real thing that still exists. I also found this in storage. See this pile of money. This is uh, the dollar wall. Do you guys remember the dollar wall? So we had this in Los Angeles and what we do is we charge every guest that comes on the show that we can remember once we get going on a roll a dollar to do the podcast and they have to sign a dollar and put it on the dollar wall. So I have all these dollars in order of how they were signed. We start with Ryan Stout and we got Ari Shafir. I know, uh, everybody from Josh Denny to Bill Burr. We got dollars from in this pile. And then listeners started sending in, their money. Oh, look, which one I opened up to just now. Ego and the Maniacs send in a dollar. So this is what happened. Listeners started sending in like custom dollars, and we would start putting listener dollars on the dollar wall. So we'll pro we'll, we'll we're gonna get this back up. We have an area for it in here. Who sent that? <laughs> yeah, there's some wild ones in here. And there's foreign currency. Here's some Iraqi. Something or other somebody sent in a while ago. And people draw on this. These are all stuck together because I just pulled them down. This is uh, Central Bank of Iraq, five dinars. People are nuts. They draw all over this stuff. But I love it. So uh, we'll get it back up. We'll get it back going. Uh, we will have a P.O. box here. And you can start sending in your own... Uh, creations for the dollar wall and we'll take photos of it too we can put like uh photos of, of on the facebook group go to nobody likes onions.com slash facebook join our group and we'll put photos of the dollar wall up so you can kind of see like zoom in and see whose dollar is where and that way if you send one in you'll be able to tell where exactly you are on the wall kind of fun like when your parents get buried at a cemetery 
and you all, you visit them once every 17 years and you have to like stop by the cemetery office when you first get there and ask them where your mother's buried because you don't actually know like layout wise where she is where her plot is because you don't really care and you don't visit her that often and uh and you have to do that because you're not a good kid you're not a good baby um not too much like newsy stuff i want to talk about today i do have a I'll, Oh, God, so much stuff has happened that you guys don't know about. And, and like a lot of it, when you don't take notes on it and, you, and it's not too important, um, you just kind of forget it and you don't even get into a lot of these stories. I'm not doing the download more RAM thing. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> that is a scam. You said, remind me of uh, Flip Schultz. I never forget when Flip Schultz got like a MacBook. You switched from a, uh, a uh, MacBook or he switched from a PC to a MacBook, and then he got this, uh, like, all this, like, RAM uh, maximizer software and, like, all these scanners and malware and virus stuff. It's like, what are you doing? Even on a PC, I think that shit's slowing down your computer. What do you need, what, what do you need all your ports constantly scanned for? What are you doing, by the way? What are you up to? <laughs> I, um... I got here and I got, uh, when I first got here like a month ago, a little over a month ago. Oh no, wait. When did I get here? I got here on like the 27th of September. So yeah, like a month, pretty much a month and a couple of days. Uh, I went to this one of these places. I looked up on Yelp. I always look up on Yelp, and I try to find this uh, like a haircut beard place because I hadn't had my uh, haircut and beard trimmed up in like a month and a half since Edinburgh. And I go to this place, and this guy, you know, it's one of these places where it's like fifty bucks or whatever for a haircut and a beard trim, and then you got to tip the guy ten. You're going to be out the door for $60. It's a healthy amount to pay for a haircut. So you go in and you, you know, if you're used to, if you're one of these like super cuts guys, like if, if it, what? I have no idea where my mother's uh, buried. Oh, I can beat that. I have no idea where my mother's buried. I haven't visited, nor did I attend her funeral, mostly because I learned of her death an hour before the funeral. Why? Would you bring that up and bring us all down right now? We're all at a very good place. We're all having a good time. And you're going to bring up how your mother died. You weren't aware of it until an hour before her funeral. We all have sad stories. You're just bumming everybody out. Bad. And I told him, uh, you know, to keep the shape of my beard. After, uh, if you go look at my Instagram, p you'll see some photos from, uh, from Oktoberfest. Had like a healthy beard going. Like getting getting like decent beard, and um, this dude, I you know you're just your head's back in the chair. You're not really paying attention to what the fuck is going on. He's talking to you. You're talking to him. You guys are shooting the shit. He's trimming away. You're not paying any attention to it. And besides, I don't know what the fuck you shaving off a quarter inch feels like compared to you shaving off two inches. This guy cut off like two inches of my beard. I was so upset. I cried the rest of the day. Locked myself in a tower and shot 58 people. Uh, no, but I, I got real. I went out to my car and I looked at it in the mirror and I would, and I just went, ugh. like he took off so much length of it. Like he shaped it up and it looked nice. I'm not saying like he was bad at, at what he did, but I told him like, don't take a lot of length off the beard. Cause we're finally getting, you know, the kind of beard where, it just gets in your mouth at night when you sleep like a gross old man. So I, I and then I I tipped him and I ended up, I bought some uh, beard oil from that place too. All in all, I think I was out the door for like 80 bucks. And I'm just sitting there going like, why the fuck did I just spend $80 on something I'm not even happy with? You know, if you do go to great clips or fantastic swarms, you, they will give you a guarantee I love that. They're like, uh, even this place in uh, L.A. that I used to go to, Floyd's. So like a chain in L.A., like rock and roll barbershop, you know. But it's like a chain. 
They would always give you a receipt, and they say, here's your receipt and guarantee. And I never asked them <laughs> what that is. What does that mean, a guarantee? I should look that up. All these places, though, these chains, like sports clips and great clips, haircut guarantee. Um, let's see what comes up. Haircut guarantee. <laughs> like, because what do they do? Like, are you allowed to go home and, like, think about it for a day? And then, like, come back and be like, I hate it. And get your money back? No, I just searched for haircut guarantee. And I'm trying to see if any of these uh, big haircut chains come up. So far, no. I'm on the second page. Hair cuttery. That's a, if that's a place you go to, by the way, the hair cuttery. Hair, hair cuttery, super cuts, fantastic Sam's, great clips, sports clips. What are the other big chains? Hair cuttery. Money back refund. Yeah. You can come back and tell them that you don't like your haircut and they just give you your money back. No questions asked. Why would anyone ever go anywhere and not do this? We really are suckers for not just claiming our free haircuts every month. Um, I mean, you, sh you and Steve Paddock shared a room, right? No. My uncle bought like 10 burial plots in Connecticut. Why? Is it like uh, Southwest Airlines? Like he's so fat, the uh, cemetery makes him buy 10 plots. They're like, look, even if we cremate you, it's going to be so many ashes that we're going to have to bury you in 10 places. Why would anybody buy that many? Not good. Uh, okay, we got to talk about a couple of things for news time wise. Uh, let me put this up and let's see how our uh, screen stuff works because this should all work if I've done my homework correctly and set up the world in a manner which functions for my glory. Um, okay, yeah, this is the one I wanted to do first. Kevin Spacey, gay. -ga we all knew this. This is these rumors have been in Hollywood forever. Kevin Spacey's gay. Uh, but why did he come out as gay? How old is Kevin Spacey? 50 all of it. You know, and a very successful and well-respected Hollywood guy. Why would he come out all of a sudden as gay? This is a man who for 20 years probably shouldn't be have been scared to come out and reveal his gayness to the world. It's because there's a kid who has alleged sexual misconduct against Mr. Spacey. This is the story told by women. Yeah. Oh, I'll fix the sound. Up. Sorry, guys. I don't know if you guys know Anthony Rapp. So he is a pretty famous Broadway actor. He was known as starring in Rent when it first came out to Broadway. So um, back when Anthony was 14 years old, Kevin Spacey was also on, on Broadway. He was in another show. Um, like Kevin I, was 26. Kevin was 26 years old. Okay. So think like Dear Evan Hansen and Hamilton, right? Like two huge stars um, in these Broadway plays. So they like did all the same red carpets together. They were in the same social circles. They saw each other really often. So mm -hmm. one night Kevin has a party at his apartment. And he, of course, invites Anthony. And this wasn't weird at all because there's other people there. At the end of the night, Kevin allegedly picked Anthony up, carried him to his bedroom, put him down on his bed, pinned him down, climbed on top of him, and made a sexual advance 
towards Anthony. Now, Anthony, 14 years 14. old. I mean, Wendy, I don't know if you saw pictures of Anthony at the time. Yes. He looks like a baby. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, he's so tiny. By the way, so... this pickup is um, something that they did in an actual play that they had? Yeah, actual play. So okay. Kevin was in a different one. And, you know, Kevin was 14 at the time. He said, you know, he really kept quiet then. He didn't tell anybody. You know, Kevin Spacey wasn't this huge famous actor back then as he is now. So in the 90s, of course, Kevin blows up. He becomes his A-list celebrity star. Anthony didn't want to say anything. Thing. But now this weekend he gave an interview to BuzzFeed. I wonder if he told his parents. Exactly, right? Or even close friends. Yeah. But now he said, you know, hearing all these people Weird. come forward with the Harvey Weinstein, it kind of inspired him to tell his story and kind of, I guess, let people that haven't come out yet to know that it's okay to talk about this. And also it doesn't just happen to women. And it doesn't happen to women. So but that's the thing, yeah. I mean, also gay old. guys, apparently. The age difference is kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, I know. All right, has Kevin Spacey spoken out? Of course. So Kevin, of course, wasted like no time. He actually sent this tweet up. He said, honestly, I do not remember the encounter. It would have been over 30 years ago. But if I did behave as he describes, I owe him the sincerest apology for what would have been deeply inappropriate drunken... Okay, this is kind of brilliant. This is kind of smart. Look, Kevin Spacey doesn't feel wrong to me. Does that make sense? Kevin Spacey doesn't feel like a creep that we all need to be on the lookout for. This Harvey Weinstein, we all have the same kind of feeling, right? When you when you hear Harvey, even if you don't know Harvey Weinstein, like you're not you're not a bit into Weinstein's. Um, when you hear Harvey Weinstein and hear these stories, and you hear that audio of him in the hallway with that girl, have you heard the, this audio? Oh, let me find this. But when you hear that stuff, it makes you go, oh, this guy sounds like an absolute creep. He doesn't feel uh, genuine. He doesn't feel like somebody you'd like to hang out with and be safe around. Kevin Spacey, I feel like, feels normal to everybody, right? Like, even, even when you hear this story, look, it is rapey. It is very rapey. He went into the room and tried laying on and groping a 14-year-old boy. This is probably wrong to do without at least the parent's permission. But I get the feeling by this by this excuse, a couple of things. Number one, it's, uh, it's a great way to say, like, I don't even remember this. If this happened, I owe him a huge apology. He must have been carrying this for so long. Jesus, I can't imagine ever doing this to somebody, making somebody feel like that. So if that's, you know, true, even if it's not, that's a great excuse. Also, this excuse only works if there's no more of this out there. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? This excuse, the I must have been really drunk... If I did this, I owe him a huge apology. That's super wrong to do. Uh, I was drunk, and that's while that's no excuse, I, I, I can't not say I remember this. It was 30 years ago. Uh, ooh, am I embarrassed, and, and I will, you know, give the family a boat. Whatever you have to say. Obviously, there can't be any more of this out there, or this excuse becomes its own story. Do you know what I mean? So if two other children come forward or adults who were then children and they start saying like, oh, hold on. Let's, <laughs> what are people saying now? Um, he strikes me at midnight in the garden of good versus evil gay. Yeah, no, he's very gay. Everybody's kind of known he's gay. When you see him in House of Cards, you know, and he does all this gay buy stuff with dudes... You kind of go, you know, they were fucking their driver. Him and uh, AIDS girl from Forrest Gorm. What's her name? Robin Wright. Robin Wright and Kevin Spacey's characters on House of Cards are like fucking Meacham, their driver. Great show. And we all know he's a great actor. Nobody's sitting around like taking away anything from his acting. But he doesn't feel like a creep. And I don't have anything to base that on. Because he clearly did try to rape this boy. But 
I don't think you could throw this excuse out. I don't think you could throw out the, I don't remember this, but if it happened, I am truly embarrassed and I owe him a huge apology. And I'm saddled with guilt about it. I was drunk and that is crazy if that happened because that is not me and not what I stand for. Great. But you can only do that if there's nothing else out there. If 19 more women come forward or boys or whatever it is and start saying this, then you can't just be like, I was drunk that time too. Wow, you know what? I have a drinking problem. Because I don't think Kevin Spacey's known for a drinking problem. If you said, like, you know, somebody like Mel Gibson or uh, what's his name? Charlie Sheen. If you came to them and, and said this accusations with 19 women that you've groped and grabbed in Hollywood, they'd be like, I don't remember any of that, but I do drink a lot, and I probably have a problem, and I'm going to go into rehab. And you can eke out under the door of excuse. Um, yeah, some, uh, somebody says Netflix canceled House of Cards uh, because of this. Yeah, Netflix has pulled the plug on House of Cards, currently shooting their last season right now. When does that usually come out? Valentine's Torn's door. Um, so yeah, it's done. Um, they had a meeting on the set of Netflix, uh, how's the card shooting where Kevin Spacey's not shooting right now and told all the people, if you ever don't feel safe around Mr. Spacey, please let us know. And also Kevin Spacey had a Netflix, uh, movie deal for some new movie. And I guess that might be up in, uh, up in the fucking shit right now too. Uh, not good. But again, this excuse is great for a couple of reasons. And if there's nothing else out there, I think this fades away. I don't think this hurts him long term. It's not going to be, he's not going to be a Polanski type Either. of guy. And I'm sorry for the feelings that he describes having carried with him all of these years. Um, you know, there have been rumors, of course, Kevin goes on, there have been rumors for years about his private life, about his sexuality. Kevin Spacey has always been really secretive. Um, and now he's saying, you know, he's addressing his sexuality for the first time. To deflect. To deflect. He says, you know, In now he opinion. chooses men. But, you know, you're missing the entire point of this, Kevin. This isn't, about, this isn't about who you choose, men or women. This is about that you were 26 years old and you threw yourself on a 14-year-old boy. Yeah. And everybody now is forgetting about that topic this morning. So, is it true that celebrities are now um, saying that... Exactly. That, that so everybody now is coming out saying, Kevin, whoa, whoa, whoa. This isn't about who you choose, your sexuality. This whoa, is about whoa, whoa. the appropriate behavior that you are yep. doing, that he's trying to kind of bury the incident that happened 30 years ago. Of course, Wanda Sykes goes to Twitter immediately. She says, no, 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 no. You do not get to choose to hide under the rainbow, kick rocks. Of course, <laughs> Billy Eichner says, Kevin Spacey just invented something that has never existed before, a bad time to come out. And that's the thing. It doesn't matter what your sexual... Yeah, here's so people are mad about a couple of things. People are mad, number one, because he first addressed the accusations of this kid, and then in the second paragraph, he said, uh, This has also led me to some realizations in how I live my personal life. I want to, uh, I choose now to live my life as a gay man, da 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 da. And people are mad, number one, that he tied that coming out moment to addressing an accusation of sexual abuse you know because this does again very smart you wonder if there wasn't some kind of pr team behind this or he's just you know smart enough to think of this on his own but you put both these fucking you fire both these guns at the same time and one one is going to be the loudest sound that people hear kevin spacey's coming out as gay Kevin Spacey expresses, uh, uh, you know, s remorse uh, at accusations. So now the headlines today are, of course, Kevin Spacey comes out as gay amongst allegations. So it's not the head. You know, people have already stopped reading once Kevin Spacey has come out as gay, and they turn and read that he's a gay guy now. But people are also mad because he said, I, I choose to live my life as a gay man or something to that effect. And everybody is upset. People are going, people are saying, um, like Kathy Griffin, I think, 
and people like this are going like, he doesn't get to choose, you know, to be gay. First of all, and I think I made this argument years ago. If you, you're absolutely, I think, banana bonkers crazy if you don't think there are people out there who have chosen to be gay. Um, I'm not saying that they're not bi or something naturally, or at least super bi curious or gay curious or homo curious. Is that even a, a term? Um, Kathy Griffin, Kathy Griffiths. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, my bad. Um, hold on. Well, this guy was about to out him, so what is he supposed to do? Yeah. Honestly, you know, Kevin Spacey's such a big star that he could just come out. Since this was one-on-one, -on -one, it happened in a room where nobody saw. He could just go, I don't know what this kid's talking about. And I'm glad he's had a little bit of success. But, you know, dragging a more successful actor's name into the mud. I'm an Academy Award winner. I'm the House of Cards guy. Frank. Francis Underwood. You know. I'm not going to sit here and let people lob allegations at me when I, I dare you to find one other person who comes forward and says, I've, I've been, I've done any kind of sexual misconduct. And then I, and he takes that ring that he wears during the show and just goes dunk, dunk and walks out of the room. He could have played it like that. And I don't think this kid has the clout to back it up. He just goes back into his shame. I was touched by a spacey shame circle. He could have played it that way. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. But I do think it is possible, and I do think that it happens where people choose to be gay. I'm not saying, see, everybody gets so mad. But, it, but this whole thing is indicative of, of everybody just wanting to fucking out somebody. Everybody's so worried that not everyone else is doing, and I'm, look, I'm not saying kids should be raped. First of all, where was this parent? You know, whatever happened to like parents watching their kids? <laughs> I don't have a kid, but if I did, I can tell you where he wouldn't be right now being raped. Now you're saying, Patrick, you're victim blaming. This is not what I'm trying to do. I'm just saying like where where were these parents who are like yeah we're going to let you go to Kevin Spacey's house to an adult party and sit in a room and and watch TV or play video games for an hour till Kevin Spacey comes in the room and puts you to bed unless they were the smartest showbiz parents ever and that's why he is where he is today because his parents plied their son into the flesh trade let Kevin Spacey tap that beautiful blonde boy ass and then that was all kind of a back, back uh, unspoken deal. The red diddler technique. Say it wasn't me. Yeah, I don't know. There's nobody who's going to... If Kevin Spacey's uh, tr tried to squash this and just go, this didn't happen. No, this boy is clearly troubled. You know, he just puts on that fucking Frank Underwood accent and then invites everybody up for some fucking brandies. Get out of here. So I don't know. I don't know uh, if this could be handled any better way, but I do like uh, everybody being outraged all the time. Now we want to we see everybody hang for everything. How many girls now? You know, just girls who just got brushed up against wrong at the office are now coming out like, Harvey Weinstein has given me the courage to do... It's like, not everybody's a victim. Hashtag me too is you were 26 years old and you threw yourself onto a 14 year old boy Disgusting. do not forget about that and make this okay. about you okay so we're, so we're gonna say alleged to all of this of course I love um moving on to tyrese's legal troubles Okay, so Tyrese, Allegedly. Course, you guys may or may not know that he's been in this really public custody battle with his ex-wife, Norma. Uh, they have a beautiful 10-year-old daughter together, Shayla. And now there has been a temporary restraining order that Norma's has. Is that it? Hold on, was there a different story?
There was some story that had like the people's tweets of outrage. Yesterday, actor Anthony Rapp accused actor uh, Kevin Spacey of making a sexual advance. Oh, it's Whoopi Goldsberg. Spacey said he doesn't remember. Apologize. Must have been a deeply inappropriate, drunken behavior. So he also used the opportunity to come out as a gay man, which has got people's heads exploding. I don't think this is the say, clip either. How do I get back to the main clip I wanted? YouTube does that thing where he's being criticized after releasing an apology to Star Trek and rent actor Anthony Rapp, who accused Spacey of making sexual advances toward him when he was just 14 years old. Spacey has found himself the target of negative reactions on Twitter because of his decision to combine that apology with a coming out statement. In an interview with BuzzFeed published on Sunday, Rapp alleged that a then 26 year old Spacey invited him to his Manhattan apartment for a party in 1986. <laughs> That's so weird. What parents will let your kid Rapp do that? He was the only teen at the party and spent most of the evening in a bedroom watching TV. He claims he was unaware the party had ended and he was alone in the apartment with Spacey until the older actor appeared in the bedroom doorway. Rapp, who is openly gay. Whoopi God Farm. God should probably go home, but Spacey stood in the doorway, kind of swaying. Came in. That fat room, bitch accused Usher of giving her herpes. What? A bride over the well, I don't know. I don't know about that story. Initially, because I'm like, what's going on? Rap went on to say, "Quote." Then he lays down on top of me. I was aware that he was trying to get with me sexually. Yeah. Late Sunday get night, Spacey with posted me this statement on Twitter, saying in part, "Quote: I am beyond horrified to hear his story. I honestly do not remember the encounter. If I did behave as he describes, I owe him the sincerest apology for what Ooh, would have been deep did I do that? Because if I did that, drunken behavior." And I am sorry for the feelings he describes having carried. Yeah, yeah, we already did all this. I wanted to get to the tweet. The then revealed he was gay, saying in part. Where do we get to the angry tweet? Decision to combine his apology with the announcement that he is gay. Some have also taken issue with Spacey's wording in the statement, suggesting that he chose to be gay. Comedian Billy Eichner, who is openly gay, this is so dumb. Some comedians have also taken issue with the choice of words. It's like. Ugh. You're all just faggots. And I don't mean any disrespect to gays. That is just so dumb. Move on with your life. Everyone's not after you. It, it, you're out of your mind. Just looking for anger. I didn't like the way he said that. Billy Eichner, who I like. I love Billy on the street. He's in God knows how many shows now. ...to the statement by tweeting, nope, absolutely not, nope. While Wanda Sykes tweeted, quote, no, 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 you do not get to choose to hide under the rainbow, telling Spacey to... First of all, you can, you can. Every fucking girl who goes down and joins in with the pride parade is hiding under the rainbow. Everybody wants to be part of a super fun gay party. Everybody, it doesn't matter. So you can choose it. Why can't you choose it? Just because I'm not, this isn't a, a, a choice or, or environment argument or born with it. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is, yes, a lot of people are born gay. Absolutely. The most gay people are born gay. But there are also people who just decide to live a gay lifestyle. Because talking to girls is too hard. Because they're socially awkward and the gay lifestyle tends to lead itself to shaking hands with your dick and not having to use your mouth too much. Because it feels nice to be cuddled up next to a man and his hairy, hairy legs at night. Whatever your reasoning. To say that you can't choose to be gay is just not... It's nuts. You can... It's allowed. Kick rocks. Rap previously shared his story with the advocate in 2001, but declined to name Spacey at the time. He says he was inspired to come forward now by the people who have spoken out with their own stories of sexual harassment in recent weeks. So that's what it is. It's just going to be this thing now that never ends and never goes anywhere. Every week there'll be somebody new who's going to be called out for something. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows who could step forward tomorrow and ruin your life? You better hope you've never raped. You better hope you've never raped. Let me tell my audience something right now. You better hope 
you've never raped. Because right about now, these women are talking, and they're telling people about it. He raped me. He grabbed me. He jerked off in a plant. By the way, the balls on people. I'm all for, you know, it being an aggressive type of guy sexually with a girl, sure. You know, if you want to be the aggressive, manly guy in a sexual encounter, you go for it. You're allowed. A lot of women like that. When a girl's clearly expressing not interest to you, <laughs> in you, and you just start furiously masturbating into a potted plant in a hotel or a restaurant, when you get in the doorway and block a woman who wants to leave uh, your house from leaving, and I'm not talking about like you and your girlfriend are in a fight and you're trying to calm her down and be like, you know, just sit down, sit down. Like blocking the door, or like grabbing her arms and being like, hey, let's talk. Like, stop. Like, you're getting upset. Like, listen to me. The, we've all been in that kind of a situation. I'm not talking about that kind of grabbing or that kind of blocking. I'm talking about a woman you don't know. You're a Harvey Weinstein. She's a young starlet. You're a Kevin Spacey, a budding 26 year old actor just stepping into his own in Hollywood, and now this 14-year-old boy is on your bed, and you've got to lay down and plank on him with your rigid, hard space penis? No. No. You're going to block the door and jerk off on girls who want to leave? Make them watch you complete all over your own hand? <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? The minute one of these stories comes out about me, about me, like, you ever hear about me, like, holding a girl down in my bathroom on a rug while force-feeding her logs of my frozen shit from the night before while peeing in her belly button and filling it up and doing body shots of margarita crab salt from her pubis? You ever hear about me doing a story like that? You won't see me over here going, like, I don't remember that, but if it happened... Ooh, I owe, you, I owe that young lady an Applebee's appetizer <laughs> pronto. Um, no. People said nice candle. Thank you. Thank you. I'm burning a candle at one end. I find it the most efficient way to burn a candle. Um, okay, let's move on to a funner one. This is uh, Corey Feldman. And I don't know if you guys have been keeping up with the Feldmans, but Corey Feldman has lost his damn mind. Remember when he tried to start that angel band a couple years ago? This guy is like, he was in some of the biggest fucking hits of, tel of uh, the movies. The Goonies, uh, The Lost Boys, all these movies where he was like this, this fucking child star, teen heartthrob. He was in every single uh, issue of Tiger Beat. With like a fold-out poster. You could put up Corey Haim and Corey Feldman. They were the hot shit. We all know Haim is a little fetish. Feldman should be dead. First of all, he has the skin and facial structure of like a 65-year-old lesbian PE teacher. And I don't know how to explain what I mean by that to anybody other than the fact that you just have to see it. And I'll, pa I'll try it when we get one of those looks. I'll pause. So yeah, stand by me. I'll try to pause on uh, one of these faces so you can see exactly what I mean. But he tried to start this band a little while ago. He was out of his damn mind. He went on like some morning show to launch it. Now he keeps teasing that he knows a uh, pedophile ring in Hollywood, all these older, successful um, men in Hollywood who were touching little boys in Hollywood. And him and Corey Haim were sexually molested when they were children, working on film sets. And he is going to come out and uh, drop this bombshell. He has teased this for years, since like 2011, I think. He has gone on talk shows and talked about how he was sexually abused, but he would never name a name and wouldn't mention a name. Now this whole Harvey Weinstein thing, again, has been the wind beneath his wings, and he feels like he can go on and uh, say the name. Now there's just one catch. He wants $10 million to put together a film, a documentary, 
to use that as a vehicle to tell everyone who these six people in Hollywood are with this true story documentary of his life. And it is absolutely just another scam of him trying to like build a rung of a ladder for him to pull himself back up. I don't know how he was this young star. He was in everything. You know, it's the saddest story since Emmanuel Lewis, Webster, trying to be this big, big actor in transition. Very few people can do that from the child into the adult whether it's music or movies. You know, we're watching America with Bieber right now. This kid has truly pivoted. You know, now now he went from, like, having all these 15-year-old fans to, like, having 24-year-old girls soaking wet into him. And maybe they're the same girls that liked him when they were 15. But good on you, starting to crop nice and young. No excuse, Kevin Spacey. And by the way, Bieber, you can't go back and touch the 14-year-old girls. That's not allowed anymore. Just because Spacey ruined it for everybody, so. I mean, there's there's protections for animals, you know, in filming. I think there need to be protections legally put in, in place to protect uh, people when they're filming human beings. Yeah. Jennifer Lawrence now hopes that legislation will be enacted in the wake of the Harvey Weinstein scandal. Weinstein's decades-long chain of alleged harassment was a dirty Hollywood secret. As far as we know, though, all of Weinstein's accusers were of legal age when the alleged incidents occurred. But there is Hollywood's other dirty secret that victimizes the most vulnerable, children. And someone who's spoken out about this and is painfully aware is former child star Corey Feldman. You freeze. You're, you're in shock. I mean, children aren't supposed to handle that sort of stuff. Oh, God, I missed the pause. I can tell you that the number one problem in Hollywood was and is and always will be pedophilia. Why will it always be? That's a weird, that's just a weird statement to make. It always was and always will be pedophilia. Pedophilia. It's the big secret. And it's widespread? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm surrounded by them. For years now, as evidenced on Nightline in 2011, Corey Feldman has been claiming that he and his good friend, the late Corey Haim, were victims of molestation when they were young actors. Last year, he opened up to our Alex Hudgens. Why didn't Kids are scared. Look at the face. Do you see what I mean? It's like that leathery old woman face and structure. Like he's definitely had weird work done, right? It looks very Michael Jackson-esque, only not so white. Do you see what I mean? That Like, the ears look elven, almost. This would be a great character in some sort of Lord of the Rings. Ugh. What is this? Ashton Kutcher has devoted his whole life to battling this stuff? What are you talking about? Weird. You know, kids don't think I'm going to go... First of all, for me... The person that was doing it to me the most, you know. Who's the 45-year-old man with vocal fry? First of all, the man that was doing it to me the most. Aren't you a star? Well, I mean, I could say that the, the two people that did it to me were both the close two people friends that did it to me. Or so I thought. Feldman claims Haim endured more than him. In his book, Choreography, he alleges that Haim was raped on the set of... Great book name, Choreography. I love that. Six film, Lucas. The following year, 1987, their film, The Lost Boys, came out. It was when we were both on the set of Lost Boys that, you know, things were happening to both of us, you know, not from anyone on the set. I might I clear that up, but, you know, outside elements. How did people not know when these are two, or, or did they know and they just weren't doing anything about it? I mean, I know he told a lot of people. That's the thing that's so upsetting to me. It's not like it's just a story. Other people know. A lot of people know. They're still working, they're still out there, and they're some of the richest, most powerful people in this business. Back in 2013, on The View, Feldman was insistent that perpetrators are still out there, but says he won't name names due to statute of limitation laws in California. He also has a... Why? Why? If they fucking raped you or abused you, why is statute of limitation your excuse? Don't you want them to be prosecuted? Hurry! Tell people. Who's doing this? That echoes something we've heard regarding Harvey Weinstein. From what I've seen, every time somebody tries to bring up a public name and they have a lot of money and power and a publicity machine behind them, the person who does the accusing is the one that ends up looking bad. They would pull away the better looking younger kids and keep them for their own after party and it would turn into a pool party. Yeah. 
and then they'd have their rules. Oh, there's no swimsuits on in the pool. In the wake of the Weinstein scandal, the producers of the film An Open Secret about teen sex abuse in Hollywood released the film for free on Vimeo for nine days. Yeah, <laughs> Vimeo release. The organized system within Hollywood for grooming and then abusing children. At the end of the day, it's got to change. There's so many people out there that have been affected by this. He wants to be an elf. Yeah, I do agree with that. It's very, uh, he's very elven looking. It's, he's not a normal guy. But, he, but he's, people are pissed off now because he wants $10 million to make a movie where he'll name the six names of these powerful Hollywood men who, who are part of a sex pedophile ring. Kyle is saying uh, that uh, Ashton Kutcher like devotes his life to this. Remember when Corey Haim and Corey Feldman had a Where Are They Now reality show? No, I do not. Oh, my God. That would be worth looking up on an after show and finding something like that. Where Are They Now? Hosted by Corey Haim and Corey Feldman. Now, what happened to Haim? I know he got murdered, death killed, um, MDK'd. When, how did he die? Was it a drug overdose or somebody fucked him to death? Ron Howard is probably the main guy. What? No way. I refuse to believe the, the voice of Arrested Development would do anything like that. I can hear it in his voice. He's a very nice man who would never touch children. And wouldn't it have come out on Arrested Development? He was around Maybe. He was around George Michael. He was around Steve Holt. You can't be around all those kids and not have one of them be your type. That's everybody's type right there. You're either into like an, a wayfish George Michael-y type guy, a beefy Steve Holt type guy, or a younger Maya Rudolph, gross-haired uh, freckle chub. Like Maybe from Arrested Development. Anyway. Um, okay, those are a couple things I wanted to talk about. Uh, people are... Uh, what are we scared of? I want to save this for tomorrow because this could be an interesting topic. So tomorrow, uh, hopefully... Guess, I'm not even going to tell you who it is because I'm not going to fucking plug it uh, if they don't show up. If they don't show up, fuck them. We'll get another guest. And uh, this is the last strike. But Halloween show tomorrow, we'll do a little uh, little bit of uh, stuff that I have planned. Hopefully, Moody will be available. Moody will be calling in uh, with, a, with a story about his roommate. Now, Moody lives with his uh, girlfriend, uh, partner, uh, fiance. I don't know what they are now. And a roommate that they run a room out to. Well, Moody and his girlfriend are in the United States and Canada right now and this guy's home alone and Moody set up a webcam as a Moody is wont to do and we've caught something we caught something <laughs> and it's interesting but it got it needs some introduction and it needs some backstory so hopefully we'll be getting in a a call from Moody tomorrow uh, during the show and an explanation of this before we show you the video. I'm in possession of the video. What could it be? I just think this is a great uh, teaser for it because, you know, putting up secret cameras to catch your roommates doing stuff is one of the best times. Are we going to talk about how I put Moody in his place when it came to clear solar panels? I don't know what that means. And I wish you guys would stop arguing about it. I don't find that kind of... This is a long-running joke if you're new to the show uh, where we tease this guy, Moody. His real name is Mahmood. He's a New Zealand listener, but he's also Arab. It's very confusing. And I don't know how he travels at all, frankly, in Trump's America. But we love teasing him. He's an engineer, and we love te teasing him about solar panels. It's a long-running uh, joke. Why solar roads won't work. We make him explain it to us over and over and over. Just like Kevin Spacey raping a child on his bed. So we'll talk to Moody uh, about that tomorrow. Uh, lots of other little dumb things we could talk about. I'm going to hang out. We're going to do an after show. 
So if you are around, even if this uh, Facebook stream ends, we'll start up another one. So stick around. It'll be in the uh, Facebook group. We're going to try to get back on Ustream, uh, which I understand now is IBM video or some shit. So we're going to try to get back on there. And I think we'll be able to simulcast. So you can either watch on Facebook or you can watch on uh, Ustream and chat that way. Uh, the phone lines will be back open uh, as well. 323-825-4990. That's all set back up again. And uh, looking forward to your suggestions on uh, on what to do here in Vegas. People that you know who are in Vegas, you know, if you know somebody's in Vegas that you think we should get on the show, feel free to let me know. Patrick at NobodyLikeScience.com. Back in the swing of it, everything's up and running again uh, for the most part that you can see, visibly at least. And uh, we should be good to go. So I wanted to come out today, do a little bit of a short, fun show. We're going to do an after show uh, sponsored by the Queef Squad. They love to get involved with this stuff. And we do have some Joe updates. So these are some of the most informed Joe uh, people to know. Uh, I haven't been following Crazy Joe, one of our weirdos that we check out every now and then, uh, for a while because he does get kind of bored and derivative. But uh, we had a real breakthrough last week. I watched Joe. I called into Joe for the first time. I spoke to Joe for over seven minutes, and we might be working on a partnership. Now, the next day, Joe did seem to forget all about this and start cursing the onions again. We're the onions. Uh, so this deal may be out the window, but uh, it could happen. It still could happen. I'm in talks with Jose Martinez himself, so we should be able to see if something can happen. Thank you very much for uh, for listening to this slash watching this. Again, we're going to stay live. We are going to do an after show. We are going to smoke a baby J and get high because why the fuck not? Oh, uh, what else is going on? I got some uh, dates I'll be announcing for the first uh, half of 2018 for, uh, for stand-up comedy. I'm going to be home for at least a month here now. I will be going to, uh, this is a big, big fun thing. I will be going to uh, the Middle East and Africa in December to perform for the troops. Give it up for the troops. Uh, for the military. So I'll be gone for a couple weeks doing that. I hope that I can do like some podcasts with uh, the troops. Do you call them the troops? So I will be in Kuwait. I'll be in Bahrain. I think Jordan, uh, um, Djibouti, uh, <laughs> just these all these fucking places you would never get to fucking go. Dubai and stuff like this and do uh, shows for the military. So that'll be really fun to do. It pays pretty good, which is great. And uh, there's always a chance I could die. There's always a chance I could get shot while there. And uh, then become like posthumously a uh, famous comedian. My YouTube views for all my stand up goes through the roofs. Um, oh, Moody says I'm almost at the apartment. I'll call in five minutes. Can you, should we do it tomorrow, Moody? Because I think we should do it on a regular show, or maybe we'll just stay on this. Maybe we just stay on and wait for Moody, and, I give, and we do this today. Do you guys want to do this today? <laughs> We'll come up with something else for tomorrow. Fuck it. Um, let's see. No, let's do it on an after show. We got to tease the overdose anyway. Guys, the overdose, it's been through some ups and downs this summer. Sometimes you get four things at once. Sometimes you get nothing for a week and a half. I hear you. I hear you. We put uh, three or four things out in the past uh, week. This past weekend, uh, drunk shows—not uh, drunk shows, but shows from Oktoberfest in Munich, and also a PM in the AM I did with Sean in Liverpool. PM in the AMs are back on uh, now here in Vegas in the mornings, and it will be later, of course, because I am on the uh, West Coast. But all access to our back catalogs, all the bonus stuff after shows, including the call coming up with Moody uh, and his roommate thing, which we will do next if Moody wants to call in then. And uh, you can get access to it all for just $10 a month. Help support the show. Again, 
Lots of layout to get this new place up and running and everything. Lots of costs. We can't do it without you. This is the only way we do it. I'm not playing ads and shit in the middle of the shows. $10 a month. It's not much to ask. Get back on the NLO. Overdose train. Nobodylikesonions.com slash overdose. Also, all of our old merch uh, from our old store, when I used to like mail things out physically and not have it fulfilled by a third-party like uh, merchant, um, is back in stock now. So look for a new store coming soon. We're going to have all the old shit we used to have, and I'm blowing it out because we got to get rid of all this crap. You know, all the stuff we had back in the day, from playing cards to fucking bottle openers to pens to shirts. We got a lot of crap in stock, and we're going to blow it out. I have mugs. I have tumblers. I have cups. I have poker chips. We have a lot of stuff. I think I have mouse pads. Can you imagine? Banana nut bread so all that stuff will be coming soon too also uh believe it or not i'll update you on all this crap today why not the uh edinburgh album from last year some progress made on that and that will still be coming out i'm so glad i never promised a date for that fucking thing to be released because it has been over a fucking year now but i promise you uh progress being made on that as well as and even more uh updates because I've been here, you know, back home, not just out uh, traveling and shit. Uh, the NLO iPhone app will hopefully be updated this week at some point. So that'll finally be in the store. It'll be 64 bits. So it'll work on all the new phones. It's finally reformatted for all the screen sizes. So if you have a larger phone, it won't look all stretched and, and blown out like an old app that nobody knew to update for a newer phone. It'll all look nice. We're working on all this stuff. NLO Radio is back up. I think the Android app still works. You can get all of our apps at nobodylikesonions.com slash app. And, uh, again, join the overdose. We're planning a meetup, NLO Week, here in Las Vegas, January 31st through February 4th. Now, February 4th is the Super Bowl, so maybe I should say February 5th. February 5th, because we're going to do a Super Bowl party. We'll have a Super Bowl party. We'll all make some bets. We'll cash in money. It'll be fun. But we'll do shows. We'll do some Vegas stuff. I'll take you around to the favorite places to eat. You know, standard in a low experience. We'll all head down to uh, uh, Rick's Wings and Rings, my favorite place. You go down there, you get buffalo wings and onion rings, Rick's Wings and Rings. Try our blue cheese. They're one of our new local sponsors. Check out Rick's Wings and Rings. I don't have any music to play for the end of this because uh, I didn't plan that far and I don't have my soundboard available. But trust me, if I did, I'd be talking over it right now. It would all be well-timed and I'd be able to get out of here with some big fucking thing. But I don't have that, so I just have to vamp. We'll talk to you guys in a minute and uh, we'll do a little after show with Moody's Stories. Thank you 